Hello everybody, in today's video we're going to be showing you how to make an automated opening and closing roller blind exactly like this. I have designed this video to work with Home Assistant, but if you use another system and you know what you're doing already, this could easily work for you. In total, this should cost you under £50 if you already have a Raspberry Pi running Home Assistant set up. To get this set up, there are a few things that you are likely going to need to buy. These are at least a two channel relay, it can be more if you're going to use it for other things, a polarity inverter. This has to be able to take a 12 volt control voltage. These seem quite hard to find, but I have managed to find a 12 volt version sold by Modeling Electronics here in the UK. We also need a power supply that is able to supply the same voltage as your blind motor needs. We'll talk about this more in a minute, but it's probably going to be 12 volts. It also needs to supply enough ampage to cover the blind motor's needs. My blind motor uses 900 milliamps, so any power supply being able to supply more than 900 milliamps will be fine. Don't worry if it's 1.5 amps, etc., because it will only take what it needs. I'm not going to provide you a link below to a power supply because there's several online and you can get them all over the place, but I don't know how safe any of them are and I don't want to set fire to your house. Now we actually need the blind motor. These are available for about £30 online, which is what I got. I supplied a link in the description to one that is exactly what we need. Bearing in mind that blind motors vary in power depending on the size of the blind that you need. If you have a small blind, it doesn't need as much power as a big blind. So bear this in mind, and quite a lot of the time in the descriptions of the motors, they tell you how big of a blind they can work with. Lastly, just a small thing, we need a couple of chocky blocks, or if you want to be fancy, terminal connector blocks, to join a couple of wires together. You can also do this by soldering them together if you want it to be more of a permanent solution. I've managed to find all these on the UK version of eBay, which I've supplied in the links below. If you buy all of them, it should work perfectly fine first time. So if you want the easy option, you can go there, but if you live anywhere else, then you probably need to find them yourself. I also want to make it clear that I'm not associated with any of these items that I've put in the description. Some of them are exactly the items that I use, a lot of the other ones though are just the first suitable item that came up. If you have already purchased these items and they've arrived, we can now set up this to make it all work. Firstly, I would highly recommend that you connect your blind motor to the power supply just to check it moves and works as expected. It doesn't matter which way round the wires connect to each other, because all that will do is change the direction of the motor. If it doesn't work first try, just change the orientation of the wires and swap the wires over, because it might be that it thinks it's already open or already closed. You need to be careful when you do this though, as 12 volt wires are exposed. Now we've checked that it is working, we can move on to going to set everything else up. This is very complex, so get ready to pause the video or slow it down if you need to. So you need to take your current blind down off the wall and take off the brackets that are already there. Now this is the part where you should slide the blind motor straight into the tube of your existing blind. However, quite a lot of the times these don't fit because the current blind tubes are just too small, too big and they just don't fit. If it doesn't fit straight away, don't panic. What we discovered was that on the page of the blind motor, it said it needed to be in a tube of 25 millimeters. However, we discovered that it actually needs a tube of 38 to 40 millimeters to even fit. Luckily for us, the local DIY hardware shop sold plastic PVC pipes. These are normally white. This meant we could cut it down to the right length we needed for our blind, and then take off of the fabric off of the old tube. We can just do this by pulling it off very gently. Then we stuck it onto the new tube and rolled it back up. This is now our new blind tube. It sounds stupid, but it works. So what we can then do is, because this is now the right size for the blind motor, it should just fit straight into it and work fine. Now we've managed to overcome getting the motor into the blind, we can now put the blind back up on the wall using the brackets that normally come in the blind motor kits. This is because now we've got the motor on it, we can't attach it in the same way as before. 
Now there should be two wires coming out of the blinds that we tested earlier. We need to tuck these away in an area that we can reach the Raspberry Pi. If it doesn't fit straight away, as these wires aren't always the longest, you can always just extend it with some other kind of wire. I just found some generic black and red wire, which we use to stick onto the end to make sure it's long enough to fit to my Raspberry Pi. You can attach these using these chocky blocks, which I talked about earlier, or solder it together. Now this is where we start integrating the polarity inverter and the relay into this as well to connect to the blind motor. Now you need to pick two GPIO ports to use for your relay. I use BCM GPIO port 23 for channel 1 of the relay and port 24 for channel 2 of the relay. It doesn't matter what port you pick, it just has to be one that isn't used for other special uses. Your relay might look slightly different to mine because mine has four channels. This is just what I brought because it was easier. Um, but the two channel one works exactly the same as what we need it for. You then can connect the ground port from the relay, which should be on the left hand side of the pins to a, any of the ground ports on your Raspberry Pi. It doesn't matter which one you choose. Now finally, when we're connecting the relay, we need to connect the VCC on the relay, which is power, to a 5 volt port on the Raspberry Pi. These are two ports in the top right hand corner of the GPIO pins. Connect to either one of these and it'll work. Now for the polarity inverter, this gets a lot more confusing. If your polarity inverter is exactly the same as mine, then follow this very closely. This is what we need to do. I'm going to show you a diagram that you can recreate on your own and it will work fine but I'm also going to try explaining it although it's quite hard to explain so I'll try my best. The positive output of your 12 volt power supply goes straight to terminal 3 and terminal 1 from left to right on your polarity inverter. Because you need to split this wire into two, you can either use chalky blocks and put two wires together or solder them together to get two outputs from that one wire. The negative output of your 12 volt power supply goes to this screw connector on the relay. It also goes to this screw connector on relay number two. Terminal four on your polarity inverter goes to this connector on the relay. Polarity inverter terminal 2 goes to this screw connector on relay 2. Finally, polarity inverter terminal 5 goes straight to one wire of the blind motor and terminal 6 goes to the other wire of the blind motor. These are our outputs straight to the blind. This completes our physical setup of everything we need and everything should now be connected. We're now going to go on to go and set up everything on your Home Assistant and Raspberry Pi. We need to log into your Home Assistant setup and access the configuration.yaml file. You can either do this if you're running Home Assistant OS by going and adding the file editor add-on to your supervisor or if you're running it straight on a Raspberry Pi OS what you can do is go to your files and edit it straight like that as long as you're an administrator. Now we're in the configuration file, we need to create a section called switch. If you already have one set up, we just make everything underneath it and follow on from the lines. If you don't have one though, you need to create a line saying switch with a colon on the end. The colon is really important. We then need to add these lines under the section. Remember, if you are using a different GPIO ports for your relay channels 1 and 2 than I am, you need to change these numbers that are currently 23 and 24 to whatever you're using. It also uses BCM numbering, so it keeps it quite simple, as that's what we used earlier. You now need to remember to save your file. If you're on File Editor, you need to go to the top, and it should be a flashing red button. Click this. You now need to restart your Home Assistant installation. Once your Home Assistant has restarted, we want to add the entities to the dashboard that we just made in configuration file. So we can turn the relays on and off separately for when we're testing. We can do this by clicking the three dots in the top right corner of your dashboard and click edit dashboard. We're then going to click add card in the bottom right hand corner. Then click on the Entities card and under Entities type in Blind Power into the box and then click on it to select it, like this. 
We're then going to do the same thing once again and type in the box polarity inverter and add that as well. Now we've done this, we want to click save in the bottom right hand corner and then press the X to come out of edit mode in the top left of your dashboard. At the bottom of your new dashboard, you should have two new entities. These should be two switches, one saying blind power and one saying polarity inverter. If you try turning on the blind power, the motor should go in one direction. And if you turn on both the polarity inverter and the blind power, it should go in the opposite direction. This is what we're going to use later to make it do it automatically for us. Now we've got to this part, we want to note down if you have to turn on both to make it go up or if it goes down when you turn on both. So if you turn on the blind power, does it go up or down? Note this down now. Before we move on, you may have noticed that the blind goes too high or too low on your windowsill. If you look on top of the blind motor, there should be two whole hexagonal holes, which you can twist by using the yellow stick that comes in the blind motor kit. It might not be yellow, but it normally is yellow. We can twist these and these adjust the automatic stop height when the blind is going down or going up. When I adjusted these for the first time, it didn't really feel like they were doing anything, but keep twisting it in one direction and you'll eventually see a change. You just need to keep adjusting these until they're right for the bottom and the top, and they should automatically stop. You can just enable these entities in your dashboard when you're testing this to see how high or how low it goes. It's quite a fiddly step and this can take quite a while to sort out. Once you've adjusted it to the correct height and stops, you want to make a note of how long it takes from the blind to go completely down all the way to being completely up. We need to know the time for a later step. We're now going to set up the automatic script and then we're going to get to our automations later on. In the bottom left hand corner of your screen, we need to click on configuration and scroll down until we get to the helpers section. In the bottom right, we're going to click add helper. We want to click on the button that says toggle. In the names field, we want to type in blind status as this is going to tell us whether the blind is already up or down. In the icon field, this is optional, but if you want, you can type in MDI colon blinds and a icon of a blind will appear. This just makes it easier and a nice symbol to appear. Your screen should look very similar to this. If it does and all the boxes are correct, we just need to click on create. We're now going to create a home assistant script so we don't have to click the buttons each time. To do this, we're going to go back to configuration and this time click on scripts. In the bottom right, click add script. We're then going to name our script blind open. In the entity IT box, we are going to put blind underscore open. This just makes everything easier if you do the same as me later. Once we do this, we can then scroll down into the sequence section. We want to change the action type from device to call service. In the service box, we are then going to type in and select switch dot turn on. If you noted down earlier that the blind opens when you just turn on the blind power, but not the polarity inverter, then in the entities box, all you need to do is type in switch dot blind underscore power exactly like this. However, if you noted down earlier that the blind only opens if both of the blind power and the polarity inverter is switched on, then you need to click add action and do the same thing again, but this time type in polarity inverter instead. This means you should have two actions, one saying that you're turning on the blind power and another saying you're turning on the polarity inverter. We now need to click add action and in the action type we want to select delay near the top. We're then going to type in under seconds the amount of time you noted down earlier that it takes for the blind to open. You then want to add one or two extra seconds just in case for some reason it takes slightly longer this time. Once again we need to add another action. We're going to set the action type to call service and in the service we want to type switch dot turn underscore off. If you turned on both the polarity inverter and the motor earlier we now need to turn both off. You'll always need to turn the power off before the polarity inverter because otherwise it will start going back the other way which we do not want to do. 
So this time, type in the entities box switch.blindpower. To turn off the polarity inverter, add another action with the type call service and service as switch.turn off. Just like before, but this time in the entities box, we're going to type in switch.polarity underscore inverter. The other option is if you only turned on the motor earlier, we just need to turn the motor off. We don't need to touch the polarity inverter. So we want to add another action and select call surface as the type. In the service, we need to type switch dot turn underscore off. In the entities, we can put switch dot blind underscore power. Now we need to make sure we press save script in the blue button in the bottom right hand corner. Now we are going to make the other script to close the blind. So to make our life easier, we're just going to press the three dots in the top right hand corner and click duplicate script. This will create a new script called blind open duplicate. And we want to change that to blind close like this. Now we've got two options again. If when we were making the last script, we turned on both the power and the polarity inverter, this time it's much easier as we just need to delete the actions that turn on and off the polarity inverter. You can do this by clicking the three dots to the right of that particular action and click the delete action button. You need to remember to delete the action where we turn on the inverter and where we turn it off at the end of the script. That is all you need to do for this script, if that is the case for you. Now the other option is if we just turned on the blind power last time, we need to turn on both the power and the inverter this time. So we can click an add another action in the bottom of the, your existing script and set the action type to call service, just like we've done before, and set the service to switch.turn underscore on, just like before. And then in the entities, we just need to select or type switch.polarity underscore inverter. As this action is at the bottom and we want it to be right at the top, you can press the up arrow to the right of the action until it gets right to the top. It should look like this. We now need to do exactly the same thing to turn off the polarity inverter, but this time we can just leave it at the bottom as that's where it needs to be anyway. Once we've done either of these options, you need to remember to click save script, just like we did last time. Now we have made our scripts, we can check that they work by clicking on the scripts button at the top of the page. It should be in blue. Now you should see the two names of your script, blind open and blind close. And if you press the play button to the left of them, it should start opening or closing the blinds. After about 15 seconds, it should stop. You should hear the polarity inverter or the motor click off and on. And if that happens, then it works perfectly fine and you have made it work successfully. Well done. If they're the wrong way round, you need to rename your scripts and swap the close and open part around. Now, the final step of this tutorial is to set up the automations. We can do this by using the blind status that we made earlier. This is going to be used to tell if the blind is already open or closed to make sure we don't keep opening and closing the blind, even if it's already there. So we're going to click automations in the top where we just were, we were in the script section. We now want to click automations and in the bottom right, click add new automation. In the trigger section of the automation, it is up to you what you want to decide for it to do and why it should open or close. But for me, what I normally do is use the sun trigger type and put a offset from sunrise of plus 10 minutes. This means that after 10 minutes after sunrise, so if sunrise is at 7.50 a.m., it will open at 8 a.m. This routine will then be triggered, which means that the blind then opens. Once we scroll down into the condition section, I normally put a time condition, meaning it only opens if sunrise plus 10 minutes is after 7.30 a.m. so that it doesn't try opening whilst I'm still asleep before that. Now this is where we use the blind status. I add another condition and if the blind status boolean is set to the true, which on my system I use false is the blind is open and if it's true the blind is closed, 
This means that the blind will only open if it is already closed. This stops the blind trying to open if it's already open because that could confuse the relays and everything could go wrong. Now we need to scroll down again and go to the action section. Firstly, we're going to call service and this service this time is input underscore boolean dot turn underscore off. The entity ID is input underscore boolean dot blind status. We want to add another action and set the action type to call service once again. We've done this a lot today, I know. And the service is script.blind underscore open. This is the thing that we made just a minute ago that actually opens the blind. Once we've done this, we can click save in the bottom right hand corner. And now it's finally set up. So whenever it is 10 minutes after sunrise and the blind isn't already open, it will automatically open for you. This is a really cool feature to have and this is one of the reasons why I like this blind automation. Now the very last part is to click the three dots in the top right hand corner and click duplicate automation. We're going to rename the new automation to automatic evening blind close. Now we've done this we can scroll down to the triggers and change where it says after sunrise to after sunset. We also need to change everything around, so change the condition section from if blind status is true to if blind status is false. This is because we want to check if the blind is already closed instead of if the blind is already open. This is a bit confusing, but it makes sense to me, and if you do this, it should work, and you eventually understand why I'm doing it. Finally, we need to scroll down to the action section, and we want to change where it says input boolean dot turn off to input boolean dot turn on. This is because we want to change the blind status helper to the it's on state. We also want to change the script for it's doing from script.blind underscore open to script.blind underscore close. This is because we want to close the blind after this script runs. Now that is everything for this automation. So what this does is when it starts to get dark at 10 minutes plus sunset, it automatically closes the blind. It is the complete opposite of what it does in the morning, but it means that it automatically opens and closes in the morning and the evening and it is really cool. Now that is everything I'm going to be showing you today in this tutorial. But as this is the Home Assistant, you can customise it as much as you want. If you want it to open at a specific time, you can always set that up as a trigger. Uh, you can set it up to only do that on certain days of the week, maybe weekdays. If you go to work, you might only want it to open at a certain time. And on weekends, you might want it to open later. This is totally up to you. And if you want a few more tutorials online on how to the, use these automations, there's plenty. Just Google Home Assistant Automation Tutorials. In summary, if you follow my tutorial exactly, what it currently does is if it's 10 minutes after sunrise, the blind will automatically open to its full setting and stop. Then at sunset, it will do the opposite and fully close and that will be it. So then it should start opening when it's starting to get a bit light and close when it's also starting to get a bit dark. So it should be about the same time as if you were doing it manually, that is when you would close the blind yourself. I really hope you like this tutorial and if you made an automatic automated blind exactly like mine then please comment below and if you have any other questions comments or anything else you want to say you can also comment that below if you get stuck on anything you can also comment and i'll try getting back to you as quick as i can for a solution as i know that it can be really annoying when you get stuck on something and because i have one myself set up it's quite easy to help you so thank you so much for watching this video as I know it's been quite long and if you can please also subscribe and like and share it with everybody else who you think it'd be useful. Maybe share it to any other online forums if you think they would appreciate it as well. And thank you for watching as this has been my biggest ever video project I've ever made. So thank you for watching and I will see you again next time. Goodbye.